Hallelujah. Jesus sana me kene giye, anun mu juru ne kene, ebi merendu foromu, anun mu juru ne kene, afanu me gana me kene giyo, anun mu juru ne kene, ebi merendu foromu, anun mu juru ne kene, hallelujah. I give God praise. I thank Him for His a glorious God, a wonderful God, a powerful God, a God that never fails them that trust in Him. Hallelujah. A God that never fails them that is trusting in His potency and ability in the name of Jesus. I want to talk on something that I've titled Trusting in the Lord that you believe. Trusting in the Lord that you believe. I, I want to look at a story that was shared in the Gospel of John. Now, most of us know about the story, but there are a few things I want to pick out of that story. And I believe that God, in his mercy, within the next few minutes, will encourage someone, make your life have focus. Hallelujah. I believe that as we go through these wonderful scriptures, that God will be faithful to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture talks about a man who has been impotent. And by discernment, Jesus was able to know that he has been there for a long time, uh, specifically 38 years. Now, this man was not 38 years, but he has been in that situation for 38 years. And he was not there. The 38 years was not the number of years that he has been sick, but the number of years he has been looking for solution at that particular spot. Amen. The Bible said at the time of the season, the Spirit of the Lord will come and stir the water. And the first to get in, will get his healing. Hallelujah. And this man, I don't know whether the season of the Holy Ghost visit happens once a year, two times a year, or three times a year. I don't know, or every month. But what I know is that for 38 years, no matter the number of time, the Spirit of the Lord comes to stir the water. This man has attempted all those many times but could not have access to just jump into the water i want us to read something read the man's words himself jesus talking to him came to him and said uh, let's read from verse 5 book of john chapter 5 from verse 5 hallelujah he said, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 80 years. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there a long time, in that case, he has been there a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Jesus asked him, Will thou be made whole? I don't know what you are going through. Some of us has been into certain situations that we are acquainted to that situation. We now define our entire existence around that situation. Now look at this man. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Yes, I know you are in the place you can be healed, but sincerely within yourself, do you want to be made whole? Why was that question important? Number one, what you believe is what you will get. What you believe 
is what you will get. He said, do you want to be made whole? This man has been by the poolside for 38 years seeking healing. And here is the master of healing who knoweth all things comes before him and says, do you want to be made whole? Which means there are things we are going to learn in the process of making whole, in the process of faith. Are you hearing me? that you need to touch in your life if you really want God to help you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then verse 7, the important man answered, answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. I have no man to put me inside the pool. For 38 years, this man has been in the pool, has been in that vicinity. People come and get healed and go. Nobody has found pity to help him. I don't know what you are going through in your life. Have you been in a situation it looks as if the world has abandoned you? Have you been in a situation all you need is a little help and the people around you refuses to help? Have you been in a situation where you are about to come out of your situation, to come out of your problem, and the people who are supposed to help you are the same people who are doing everything to run you down? I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I'm trying to talk to somebody who has felt disappointed with men and the people around him or his environment. I want you to know that it is, you are not the only one and it is normal with the wickedness of men. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to read down up to verse 10. Verse 8 says, Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was Sabbath. Now listen to verse 10 clearly. These are the people who ha he has been expecting to help him. These are the people whom this man has been waiting for to assist him. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, Is it the Sabbath day? It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Hallelujah. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Verse 11, He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take thou thy bed and walk. Hallelujah. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto him, Take thy bed and walk? Hallelujah. Now listen to this clearly. They couldn't help him. For 38 years, none of the Jews saw the reason to assist him. For 38 years, none of the Jews has the reason or ever see why we should say, the next season, let this man go. Let us push him in so that he can go. <clears throat> All the other days that the season has been and all the events has been going on, people have been healed of all diseases. Nobody among the Jews saw reason to say, I'm waiting for the season for the stirring of the water. Once it comes, let this man live here. They didn't do it. But the Messiah came in their midst and healed the man. Praise the Lord. And the man was healed. Instructed him to take up his bed and walk. And he took up his bed then suddenly all the Jews became interested in his case, became interested in his situation.
to take him back to his problem, to keep him tied to his bed. They were comfortable looking at him going through those pain and handicap situation. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I want to assure you that the very people who are questioning your success are the same people who rejoiced over your pain. Is anybody hearing me? The very people who are questioning, who are condemning, who are saying things about your breakthrough, they are the same people who has done everything possible to keep you in your former state. Now, I want to talk to you and encourage you to take a step of obedience to the word of God. Take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and do what? Walk. I don't know the life you have been living. Maybe you have been living in sin. And now God has come to deliver you. And the people are talking. Are you sure you can do this born again thing? Are you sure you can live righteous? How do you trust the pastor of that church? Are you sure they are not going to deceive you? Now you are going to run around in prayers. Are you sure they are not going to finish your money? Are you sure you are not, they are not going to run you down? Yes, where have they been all the while you were dying in sin? Where have they been all the while your pain has been running you down? Nobody has suggestion. Nobody has ever come to say, ah, what is going on? What is the solution? They will only tell you, ah, have faith. It shall be well. It is well. God is going to help you. The moment they see you take the right step of salvation, they all become advisors, special advisors, to advise you what to do. Are you hearing me? Some of you, you God just opened up for you after trusting God and you made one or two monies. Everybody is here to tell you who to friend, who not to friend, how to spend the money, how not to spend the money. And the other group is there saying, who knows what he has done? He has joined them. He has started doing this. He has started doing that. But all the while you were in pain, nobody came to encourage you. Hear me and hear me clearly. I want to talk to you as this situation of pain globally is coming to an end. Choose your friends right. Choose your associates. Choose your acquaintance. Jesus asked the man the question, do you want to be made whole? If you ask my opinion, I would say that Jesus was telling him, can you remain in this company and be healed? And he answered indirectly by saying, I don't have anybody, but why are you still with them? Because I'm sure if they had no form of relationship, they would not notice him standing up immediately because he said there were many crowd. The people that immediately noticed him were the close people who wants to run him down. Because other people who are not Jews, if they were close and they have seen. Are you hearing me? Now, now I need you to understand this. Focus well. Follow me and understand this. The Bible said there were many crowd in that pool. And he went on to say, and the Jews, which means there are more than the Jews. There are other tribes. There are other people who were there. But I'm sure this man went to stay with the fellow Jews, the people he called his brothers. The people he called, he called his friends. The people he called his acquaintance. 
He went to be in their midst. That was why they were the first to notice that he's healed, that he has carried his mat. And I'm sure that question Jesus was asking him was like saying, you cannot be in this association. You cannot be with this company. You cannot be with this group of people and be healed and be set free. Why? They want to boast. They are not interested in the man's welfare. They are not interested in God's action. They were interested in the boast of their supremacy as the Jews. Ah, you don't defile our Sabbath day. I spent 20 million. I, I don't know, have you met such people? You come to ask them for a little help of 10,000. They tell you, ha, ah, you came late. I, I just spent 20 million. I just spent 30 million. In fact, don't you see, I'm, uh, that project I'm doing now has cost me 15 million. You came at the wrong time. If you had come yesterday, just worry. Uh, give me time. I will call you for 10,000. Let me tell you. Believe the Lord thy God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. What the man did was to cry unto God and Jesus himself had to come and help him. The only person that can pull you out of your present situation is God. He said, with God, all things are possible. The man you are looking onto may just be very happy for the situation you are into. The woman you thought is your acquaintance you want to tell your problems who is the one that will take it to the market and broadcast it to make sure that you are demoralized and go back to the bed of affliction. Hear me and hear me clearly. Be with God. Because I love the word of David in Psalm 23. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Now, I need you to understand it. Thou, who is thou? God prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You may be in the company of those that hate you for no reason. Anything about you pierce their heart. Once your name is mentioned, they start provoking they start talking. They talk behind your back. You are talking in your presence. Yes, they are your enemies. But if you have confidence in God, if you have trust in God, you will still be blessed while they watch. Hallelujah. Very soon, the agent of destruction called COVID-19 will go. Like I told you from the onset, by the 27th of this month, May, this issue will die a natural death. Even though a situation will arise that has to do with economy. I said it that time, I still maintain it. That situation will draw all attention and um, that is the one we need to pray about. We we'll pray for the month of June and July. And I've said it many times. Now, for those that believe in God, that understood the ministry of a prophet, I pray and beg you to prepare in whichever way you prepare. Hallelujah. And um, go through the next two months and God will prove that 2020 is the year the just shall live by faith because he still has good things for us. Hallelujah. Now, what am I saying? This lockdown would have shown you who are your friends. Who are your acquaintance? Who are the people you should be with? I pray that the faithfulness of God will give it to you in abundance in the name of Jesus. Give you the wisdom that will teach you, that will show you the road to follow, the track to run upon, that you may succeed in the name of Jesus. Now, you need to follow me carefully in this world. Now, listen. Not everybody that calls you to check on you is actually expecting you to be well. They call you 
to check on you to know if you have finally died. And when you say you are well and you are okay, they will say, mm, it's okay, we'll give God praise, we'll God be praised, and they'll call the first and say, ah, so this man has not died, he's still alive. Are you hearing me? And you call them and tell them of the things you want to do. They will say, ah, we are behind you, we support you. You go on, ride on, God is with you. Ah, this your vision is our vision. We have been praying for the right man or the right woman to do it. And you pull your confidence. They will go back and discourage every other person that they heard from you that is in support of you. Hear me. If those men had any interest on that man while he was there for 38 years, they would have done something before 10 years. Are you hearing me? But I'm sure all the people that met him there, most of them have died for that 38 years, but God kept him alive. Let me tell you, whatever you are going through, whatever vision God has given you, and you are running with that vision, you are going with that vision, and it has been difficult to accomplish it, but you are still here, and the people that run against you most of them are gone. The people who came and joined on the way, running against you, some has all gone. Let me tell you clearly, that vision is from God, but it's not you that will fulfill it. It is God that will perfect it. You may say, God gave me this vision. Then you are doing everything possible, humanly possible, lobbying friends, talking to people, seeking help to fulfill it. And for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you are pursuing that vision. But that vision has not come to pass. Why? It's not that God lied to you. But like Jesus asked the man, he said, do you want to be made whole? And he began to explain his confidence on fellow man to push him. Hear me. It is time you hand over that situation to God. It is time you call back God who sent you and gave you that vision. And say, my father... I have done what I could, but situation seems impossible. Arise, O Lord, let your vision come to pass. Are you hearing me? It is time you go to God and say, Lord, do this according to your purpose, according to your will. In the time of God, Jesus helping the man, Jesus did not go to stir the water as the Prince of Peace, as the Son of the Most High God. He did not go to stir the water, but he laid his hand and held the man and said, take up thy bed and walk. Your thinking of how God will work might not be how he decides to work. Hallelujah. I've seen people say, oh Lord, I want my family to be born again. I want this to happen. I want that to happen. And it seems the more you talk to them, the more you preach to them, the more you pray, the more they get worse. And maybe the more even things get worse for you, they will say, where is that your God? Stop. Talk to God. Say, my father, do this for me. I cannot do it. Submit to him because he said he is strong in the time of our weakness. Are you hearing me? Submit to him. And you will see him do those things in a split second. During the, the killings of last year and years back, if you open the, the first book, the only thing you will hear on the internet, uh, Nigerians are praying, what have they gotten? What has the prayer done? What has the prayer this? The prayer that? They keep praying. Shabra Baba. Do the Father. Mocking God. And God wanted to prove himself. He sent only one virus. And the funny enough, he's not even the one that created it. He put it in the brain of greedy men. And they released it. And the Boko Haram, ISIS, explosion. Bomb, we no agree, we agree, everything. Everything died a natural death. Why? God pushed a finger. 
He just pushed a finger. And every man kept silent. If you are a Christian, you have been praying, this is time to pray more. Because God has risen. And he's doing more. I bet you he's doing more. Like I said, by the 27th of this month, May, a week, not even up the week now, few days from now, Wednesday, I think, this issue of COVID-19 will fade. And uh, something that is bigger will come. But listen, the just shall live by faith. And the, un the ungodly will have reason to believe God. Wherever you are, if you are here, if you are listening to this message and the enemy has taken upper hand in your life and the power of darkness has seems to take hold of you so much that you are beginning to doubt your faith. I want you to raise your hand wherever you are, whether you are live with me or you are watching it as a tape. And say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you because I now realize that it's not by power, it's not by might, but by If you can wait for 38 years, because the situation means that that man has been in that pool before even Christ was born. But since you came, O oh Lord, to go and command him to be made whole, Father, I pray that you come into my life and speak that my life may be made whole. Thank you because I know you answered prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, it simply means you have faith. And that faith will work for you. For without faith, no eyes shall see God. Now, as long as you believe those words, your situation will change in Jesus' name. The whole thing that has mocked your life will begin to celebrate you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. I pray that 2020 will be your year of success. Are you hearing me? 2020 will be the same year God will lift you up in the name of Jesus. In the very face of this adversary, God will prove himself to you. It might be tough now. It might look as if it's impossible now. But hear the word of God. 2020, this same year of petition, this same year of epidemic, this same year of pain, this same year of isolation, the angels association will change your life in Jesus' name. You have been isolated on earth that you may associate with the group of heaven. Are you hearing me? Go to God. Associate with your spirit. Associate with the angels. Associate with the Holy Ghost. And see whose association will better your life. I pray that today wisdom will be given to you. That you may listen to these words. Obey them. And don't wait for the angel to stir the water. Pray that Jesus will talk to you and your situation will end in Jesus' mighty name. Now, for those of you who are opportuned to love God, don't ever forget that value. Don't ever forget that God gave you a privilege to be with him. And hear me and hear me clearly. That God will not abandon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. May we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Do you know why I shared grace with you? Because I know that in less than one week, isolation is over. And God is faithful. Even though something different starts. But the faithfulness of God is wonderful. So this page, we close it now. And next week, we start something new. I'm going to talk to you on how to overcome whatever is coming as I hear from God. Thank you, Father, for you never fail in Jesus' name. Say hi to your soul. Talk to your soul. Say hi to your soul. 
And if you encourage your soul, like David did, the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Say hi to your soul. Encourage your soul. Tell your soul it is well. And God will do good in Jesus' mighty name. See you next time.